Today, former President Barack Obama is in South Africa after delivering the 16th Nelson Mandela Annual Lecture. The speech commemorates the 100th anniversary of the birth of Nelson Mandela, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, known for anti-apartheid advocacy, reconciliation, and education as a leader in South Africa. Obama's speech warned of corruption and discrimination in politics today, but reminded the audience that the world has seen darker times. I am not being alarmist. I am simply stating the facts. Look around. Strongman politics are ascendant suddenly, whereby elections and some pretense of democracy are maintained, the form of it, but those in power seek to undermine every institution or norm that gives democracy meaning. But we haven't seen too much of the former president since he left office, which is kind of weird considering he lives less than three miles from right where we are here in Tenley Town. Let's bring in Roxanne Roberts, who's a longtime uh, one of the feature writers for the Washington Post style section. Roxanne has just done uh, a lengthy story about the Obama's post presidency. And so it is kind of weird, right, that they live just down the street, but we don't see about them. We don't really hear about them. The only time you tend to hear about him is when they're out of town. For example, President Obama is in South Africa today doing a commemoration of Nelson Mandela's uh, birthday. Uh, it would have what would have been his hundredth birthday. So um, that's when we see him. And but when you ask people about where does he live, a lot of times people forget that they live in Washington because you don't really see them out and about in Washington very often. You know, it's been almost 100 years since a president left office and stayed in D.C. That was right. Woodrow Wilson back in 1921, as you point out in your story. So, you know, the Obamas announced they were going to stay in D.C. well before they left office. So what was the expectation of their lives in D.C., and how is that matched with the reality? Well, Wilson was very sick when he left office, and he only lived another couple of years. The Obamas were unbelievably popular, unbelievably young and sexy and vibrant, and I think a lot of people sort of hoped that they would be a real presence in town, sort of embracing the adopted city. What makes that a little tricky for them is that the custom for past presidents is to keep a relatively low profile when it comes to whoever their successor is. And the fact that the Obamas live in Washington very close to the White House uh, made that a little bit of a balancing act. But I think that nonetheless, people still hope that they would see them in non-political ways at restaurants and at theaters. And they do do some of that, but I was very surprised how under the radar they're able to fly when they do those things. This elite circle that they've surrounded themselves in, they're not the people that are out there going, hey, I was hanging out with Michelle and Barack last night. So how <laughs> difficult was it for you to write this story? You didn't have a lot of people willing to go on the record. That, in fact, is true. I somehow expected that now that they were private citizens, some of the uh, press ban would drop. They were always extremely private. They always sort of kept very much on message. And I thought that maybe some of that would have been relaxed, but no, I was really surprised that even when I called to say, hey, you know, are they out much? Do they like living in Washington? What's their life like here? I have never had so many phone calls unreturned. Right. And I think that's because um, there's, their neighbors really do feel like they are entitled to having a private life. Um, that's contradictory to what the press does because he still, Barack and Michelle Obama are two of the most famous people in the world and they're living in our midst and there's still a great deal of curiosity about them. So my job as a reporter is to kind of get a sense of what their lives are like. Uh, but there is very much a sense that you talk about them at your risk of being sort of thrust out of their inner circle uh, unless you're authorized to talk about very specific on-point things. Roxanne Roberts, uh, longtime feature writer for the uh, style section of the Washington Post. Appreciate your time. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you so much.